What's up, everybody? What's up? It is episode number six. And good evening and good afternoon, boys. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. How How are you? you? Everybody looks so crisp in their white tonight. How do you feel? I'm feeling like a rose. (laughs) Can I call you Rose? Okay. Okay. Feeling, you know, very painterish, you know, a little shaggy Scooby Doo moment. Yes. Yeah, Steven, where are you? We need some help from you now, darling. <laughs> In my Scooby Doo bag, okay. Scooby Doo bag. <laughs> I'm guessing we decided to get very much white, you know. Um, so today is episode six, and I am really excited. Um, for a lot of reasons. I'm more excited because hey, it is Leo season officially. What Ooh. better season to end this show? First season. During the baddest and the best season of them all, Leo season. <laughs> but no, happy belated birthday to me. I celebrated my birthday this weekend in DC. Happy birthday. Oh, my birthday was Friday. So it's dun, been dun, a great dun. time. Thank you. And we're I'm excited just to see you guys for my birthday in New Orleans in two weeks. Less than two weeks will be together. Let me tell you it's something, right, baby. Less than two weeks. It's like a week and some change. A week. And I, oh, after this yet. weekend, I don't think I'm prepared. Because Why is that? I am the, the drinks at the page, I don't think my body is ready to take those again. Like, I was at Nelly's this weekend, and baby, I was lit. Can we and I don't know. Some of those queer spaces for the people in the back yes. that have never been. So if you have never been to Nelly's in D.C., you are doing yourself a disservice. Mm-hmm. If you are a a a member of the community that is a spot you cannot go to dc and not go to now yeah definitely if you have ever had the opportunity of being in the dirty south you must hit up the page okay i just have to shout them out so shout out to the page and shout out to the nelly new orleans definitely has the page Nellie's in DC. You gotta always shout out our black businesses. So shout out to Thirst Lounge. Um, I think they've Mm -hmm. been in existence a little over a year now. So shout Shout out to to Thirst. Um and I'm doing great things in DC as well. If you are in Atlanta, of course, Bulldogs, Friends, Blakes, all that good stuff, baby. It's a good time everywhere. And I got to do it for Charlotte. Y'all wear Miss Woodshade out, but that's the place to be. So if you're in one (laughs) of those places, you can go to these places. And if you're in Richmond, Virginia, there is Godfrey's and Barcode. Um, New York, of course, has so many places. Child, New York is just a mixing pot. And that's how I feel about Texas. Um, And this weekend was absolutely insane in D.C. because let me tell y'all, my birthday has commenced. I kissed somebody this weekend and don't even know know his name. You did it. No clue. You was trying to find I him. woke up this morning and said, what happened? And they said, you kissed somebody. And I didn't know this man's name. But It's absolutely I insane. I had a video. And y'all know how I do. Can y'all help me find him? Please. And um, unfortunately, um, he was found by my cousin who told me that was his ex years Ooh. ago. So um, <sighs> shout out to that. Um, what do we get? Hold um, it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Huh? The people want to mm-hmm. know. So just so I could just clear it up for the people in the back. You went out this weekend. You were at Nelly's. You had a wonderful time in celebration <laughs> of your birthday. You also went to Broccoli yeah. City. Is that what, what is it yes. called? Sorry. Broccoli mm-hmm. City Festival, Broccoli, yeah. Broccoli City Festival. So you were in town for that, and you ended up kissing your cousin's ex. Yes. I didn't know it was my cousin's ex. At the time, he, he did know, not he know. know. I guess let's put the disclaimer out there. Let me get the disclaimer. He did not <laughs> know. They'll clock. Right. They'll clock, they'll they'll clock you, girl. They will clock you. You did not know it was your cousin's ex. No. Stunning. Yo, no, so I put it on my page and I said, find them. And that's when I found out that was my cousin's ex. Wow. But Vaughn had a great time too. I did. So I heard. So I heard. I, I had a really good time. In the club. It was absolutely insane. I mean, I don't understand why uh, when I get around somebody, the, the spirit of them just jumps on me. Um, but there's this oh, person that loves to kiss people in the club. And baby, when I tell you, it was giving, I was kissing somebody in the club. I mean, I, it was it was absolutely absurd. Ooh, and I actually am very. In the club. I am very. Um, no, I don't want to say upset. I'm disappointed in myself. For, oh, you know, girl! Getting out of character like that because you know I'm a classic. You girl. only oh. live once. It's okay. I, I agree. I agree with that. But it's like I've been, been a nasty girl, nasty. <laughs> I've been a nasty. <laughs> but oh my, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, don't just go kissing people. It's Please not don't. good. Don't try that at home. At least I knew who I was kissing. 
All Mm-mm. right. Well, move, moving on to tonight's episode, because we would not do that. <laughs> episode, yes. <laughs> this is our last episode virtual. This is our last virtual episode of the season. The next time will be our finale show, episode seven, the number of completion, and we will all be together. So tonight's episode, I'm really excited. Um, but you know, as we do every episode, we have to have a cocktail. Yes. Gotta have, have a cocktail, baby. And this week, honey, we have an espresso martini. And Ooh. in honor of <laughs> the elite himself, Mr. Dre Brown, honey, we, if an elite the <laughs> the espresso <laughs> martini is the elite to go to, huh? Not you was weak already. Yeah, because it's way. <laughs> and espresso martini is the elite to go to, and I don't want to go anywhere that doesn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I love Drake. Shout out to Drake. Yes, I love him. But Dave, get into the cocktail, honey. Let us know what's in it. Okay, so for this week, again, like we said, like I and Von J said, we have to start with an espresso martini, right? So when I think of an espresso martini, I think of a classy girl. I think of a D.C. girl, a New York City girl, you know, a girl that's on the town, a sex in the city. It's it's just one of those cocktails that it will do you right, okay? Now, mm-hmm. you got to be an experienced cocktail fan in order to enjoy an espresso martini. But this cocktail is simple. So for my tequila girlies in the back, you can put that in your espresso martini, okay? So this is two ounces of Reposado, some freshly brewed espresso. Make sure it's cold, right? An ounce of coffee liqueur like a Kahlua. Fill that cocktail shaker up. Shake it until it's cold. You want it nice and cold. Put it in a nice chilled martini glass. You can garnish it with three coffee beans or like I did. I did a little creme brulee. I took some brown sugar and torched her. And cheers, girls. Cheers to the girls' weekend. Cheers Cheers to the girls' weekend. Okay? And enjoy. Yes. Ooh. That's all right. Baby, she's good. I've been sipping on her before we even started the episode. <laughs> so I have a little caramel twist going on, and it's giving me what I need. <laughs> it's giving me what I need. Oh, yeah, you and Vaughn. I, I think mine's is a little salted caramel moment as well. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Well, now mm-hmm. that we've enjoyed um, our cocktail boys and girls. Yes. That listen, Let people know. I'm super, 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 super excited about tonight's special guest. All right. So, boys, what does Peloton, Giant Food, McDonald's, uh, Luna Azul Tequila, European Wax Center all have in common? They all have in common our special guests. These are just a few of the brands that my boy, my incredible guest, has captivated with his unique storytelling and his creative vision. So, Frank one, first won our hearts as the first LGBTQ player to win season four of Netflix show, The Circle. His journey continued to inspire many when he shared his story of overcoming financial hardships on Netflix popular show, How to Get Rich. Since then, Frank has transitioned into a full-time creative. I'm talking about no playing games. I'm a content creator. We talking about full-time creative entrepreneurship, partnering with all those major brands that I just released. And I'm gonna go ahead and claim 10 more of those for my friend. His talent for blending his humor his honesty and storytelling has made him a sought after collaborator in the industry. If you don't know who I'm talking about by now, then you don't you don't even listen, listen, come back. Go to his page right now, look him up, and then come back and listen to the episode. But I would love to welcome to the stage my friend Frank. Frank in the city, where you at, baby? Hi! Hello. Wow. Welcome, that was so welcome, nice. welcome, welcome. Wow, who is that you was talking about? <laughs> okay, <laughs> the next big thing. That's what we were talking about. Okay, yeah, I, had to, I had to think on that thing. I was like, what do I want to proclaim? I think all moments are powerful. So what do I want it to say? Because yes. that's going to be a thing. So yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for joining us. Of course. Thank you. For okay, me. so um, I think now Welcome. we're going to get into some tea time with T-Nail. Yes, we are. We are. But before I get into tea time, I do want to say to you, Frank, I am excited to see you on this podcast. Me I know you're a director, comrades, but I've known Frank for a long time. We met very generically. Like, I think we we're in the line of DC, and then from there, it just kind of became a moment where we see each other in the city, or we'll randomly like hope mm-hmm. all is well, things like that. 
you are such a breath of fresh air for many. Aww. So to you, I give you your flowers tonight, all of them Aww, tonight. Um, you. and say welcome to Thick Talk Podcast. We thank really you, first good. lady. Thank you. <laughs> oh, uh... <laughs> and I hope you have a cocktail so you can hang on tonight. Now listen, I'm about to get tore up because everybody <laughs> knows an espresso martini is my thing, right? And while Dre Brown might be uh the covering. Uh -huh. I'm on the next high branch under it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The high I feel that. But Period. I be going out to get the espresso martinis, but I don't got not one espresso martini glass. But <laughs> I told that Dave was, I could tell Dave was like, can I cuss on him? Yes. <laughs> okay. I was about to say, you know, I got to ask. I was like, uh, I had told Dave that I was not going to make an espresso martini. He was like, bitch, it's your drink. And I was like, Oh, but I don't feel like getting under the stub. And I could tell he was kind of like, all right, bitch, you kind of <laughs> kissing me off a little bit. Get together. I go with it. So I, I made, I had some coffee in my refrigerator. Okay. I had me a little creamer. I had me some French vanilla syrup. And I just mm. gassed me about three shots up in here. It's mm -hmm. not in a martini glass, but these it's are from Crate and Barrel. Mm -hmm. so, okay, Crate and Barrel. Yeah, this is this is this is my little version. So I'm gonna be up all night fooling around with y'all. <laughs> but Dave approves. Dave's gourmet cocktails. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. Yes. Listen, yes, 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 let me yes, tell you yes, something. Yes, Dave yes, gourmet yes, cocktails yes, and I play bro. about. Don't play when it comes to the thick tail of the week, honey. She will get us slammed together if we I have said, the wrong glass. I said I know he want to He want to eat us up ahead. But I, I was like, you know what? You need to do the, you need to do the right thing, the God like thing. So <laughs> yes, amen. Yeah. And now we're here. And it's really good. Like I really am ready to try your version. Like okay. I want to try that because I know that caramel in there is a ten out of ten. She's cute. It's, it's cute. It's really but you know, I'm gonna give you a bad rating on Instagram if it's not. So <laughs> I will I will report back with okay. a very fair rating. Yes, honey. We, okay. love a we love a Yelp review. We love it. Okay, mm -hmm. get the girls together, mm -hmm. don't we? Well, speaking <laughs> of reviews, and speaking of away. speaking of ratings and reviews, darling, there's a lot of things that we can discuss, but I must talk about two political things tonight as we go into talk with T. I'm a huge, huge turning point in the elections of 2024, darling. As you know, two weeks ago, we sat here, we talked about Biden, and we talked about how old he was, and we talked about Trump being Trump. Um, but since then, the Republican National Convention has commenced, and um, the Democrats also decided to do what's best for this electoral race. And that means Joe Biden himself, President Joe Biden, decided to step down from the race, allowing his vice president, Kamala Harris, to be the running um Democrat right now for the season. Um, now, of course, the Democrats have not had their convention yet, um, as it is coming up, and that'll be held in the Midwest. But Miss Kamala Harris, Miss Kamala Harris, Miss Kamala Harris, darling, within a day, she raised over eighty million dollars, the highest ever been raised in the history of presidential um elections and campaigning. Since then, we have heard people say the white women are for Kamala. They had a call. Black women for Kamala had a call. The queer men and queer women had a call for Kamala. White men had a call tonight. Most of these calls raised about $2 million themselves. Post, um, after that $80 million was raised, Kamala is definitely leading the race. And it looks like she might be leading the polls, um, as many are starting to see what this country really needs, and that is progress and change. Meanwhile, President Trump is known to be saying things like, would you rather have the black president or the white president? Um, or he says things like, J.D. Vance says, people that don't have kids and aren't married should not have the same weight in voting as people with families. Or J.D. Vance saying things such as, Democrats make everything racist. You know, I had a Mountain Dew yesterday and a diet Mountain Dew today. They would call that racist. So we're really seeing Republicans for what they are. And that is mean, mischievous, evil, hateful, and jealous people. And darling, nobody wants that attached to their name in this season. So Kamala, good luck to you. We stand with you. We are here for you. Um, and if you're watching or listening, we will have some stuff going on between now and November to advocate and also push not only voting, because before you vote, you have to do what, everyone? Exactly. You got to register, baby. Oh, you register. got to register to vote, baby. <clears throat> so we got to register to vote. So we talk about for Kamala. and I'm folks ready. can't even register, you know? You got to register. Okay. Um, one big thing that Trump also said that really has shaken the world up is when he said if he gets elected again 
He's going to let police officers do what they want to do and do what they need to do by any means necessary and give them full immunity um, to do their federal jobs as police officers. Um, and that did not take well because the country is also in great mourning, grief and anger um, as we mourn the death of Sonia Massey. Um, and if you're not familiar with that story, it is a very traumatizing story because there is video footage of this story. So we want to first say to her, you know, rest in peace to our sister of the culture. Um, people like you are the reason why we vote. They're the reason why we advocate. Um, and really quick, Sonia Massey, she was killed inside of her home um, in Sangamon, Sagamon County. Deputies responded to a 911 call because she called the police and said that there may have been a prowler on the loose. They showed up to the door around 12.50 a.m. on July 6th. So this is late at night. A woman is calling saying that she thinks there's a prowler either trying to get into her home or in her neighborhood. Now, according to the video, the police officer come to home. There's an aggressive police officer there. They're talking to her. You could tell already that police officer was very agitated. Just, you know, you know, I have my own beliefs, guy. I, I knew the demon was in her when she started talking. But. Sonia had a pot of boiling water on the stove. So the other officer said, well, we don't want to start a fire. Do you mind getting that boiling water? Because at this point, she's not a suspect of anything. She's a victim, and she called the police. So what need what we need to be alerted? So she goes to get the pot off the stove. As she's taking the pot to the sink, the other officer begin to back up because they're like, well, we don't know what you're going to do with the pot. Now, you instructed her to take the pot off the stove, and now you're scared because y'all could have easily removed it yourselves. As I take the pot off the stove, um, Sonia Massey's engaged, and she's talking. One of the police officers says, you know, if you do anything crazy, I'm going to shoot you in your face. And after that is when she said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Literally, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. After she said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, the officer starts acting agitated. He then shoots her in the face um the video itself is very traumatizing i could only watch it once because it literally shows a woman a woman who called for help be killed and for some reason i don't care what people think she knew something was about to happen crazy her whole aura to them gave y'all not here to help me y'all here to kill me or mm -hmm. here to um so that that story with Sonia Massey has caused a big spark politically um, as well in, 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 in the world. Um, so rest in peace to Sonia. I'll leave the floor open to anything you all may want to say really quick. But I did not want to let this episode move on without discussing those two things. Whew. Um, <clears throat> just definitely, you know, when we when we think about the hashtag, say her name, it's a hashtag that I keep thinking, like, is it ever going to go away? Are we ever going to not be able to have to add to the list, right? There's so many There's so many that we think of. We think of Sandra. We think of Brianna. We think of so many of them. And um, I, it just seems like every year, Black folks are mourning the loss of another person. So um, holla for Kamala. <laughs> oh, I'm going to yeah. say, holla for Kamala. Please get out there and vote. Yeah. yeah. I absolutely get, agree. I think it is move. really, 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 really heavy. And I think protect black women is something that continues to echo in my brain um, because we've been saying the same thing over and over again. And while I may not be a black woman, I come from mm -hmm. a black woman. Black women support me. I support black women. And I just feel like I understand what you mean because I too could only watch the video once and I literally watched it and I was like she knew something was about to happen to her and she felt like what can I do in my head from my from my interpretation of it just also because I'm a very spiritual person and I'm like she was trying to figure out what can I do to protect myself and that protection being the people that were supposed to protect her is just it's just so sad so yes baby yeah. we have to holler for kamala because baby if we don't that will be i just feel like while trump was in office and i used to don't get very political but i feel like while he was in office as a black gay man i had to become very much okay with knowing that i'm not protected mm -hmm. and that if anybody does anything to me they're going to be protected versus me yeah. 
getting any type of protection. Um, it's my life doesn't matter. And I don't know. I felt like when Trump was in office, it was just this dark cloud over just life. And when, mm -hmm. you know, when Joe Biden got in office and it wasn't, you know, Joe had his things just like everybody does. There will never be a perfect candidate. Um, he may be great for a lot of people and may have been uh, terrible for people. Um, but I do feel like that cloud went away. So mm -hmm. I'm just very nervous um, because I see us telling us not to vote for right. us. And yeah. that scares me. Yeah. So I think we have we have to holler for Kamala. I agree. I mean, even when you just said about um, when Trump was in office and how you kind of felt unsafe, like even for me, I bought a gun when, you know, he was in office. I felt like, you know, people were just moving you know, so different, like when it came to like just being in uh, in people in like your community, like you didn't feel safe nowhere, honestly, when you was, you was with somebody that was like of a different race or just in general. So mm -hmm. I got my first gun and I took a class and I got my concealed permit, all of the above during his, you know, um, his run. So I definitely understand what you're saying when you say that. <laughs> Baby, and I'm going to be right behind you because I don't move to Virginia. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. You know, I would live in Virginia, so... Um, Oh yeah, so no I'm a, I'm a, we gonna chat offline because I need to see. Am I gonna be able to get the gun before they before we vote and stuff? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was I had to have to pipe a motherfucker down, but I will. Okay. Oh, listen. Well, in closing, <laughs> to talk with the T as we transition to other things. Um, I do want to close that story by just saying Deputy Sean Grayson, um, was arrested on charges with first degree murder as that um sheriff's office did find it that his efforts were not called for they were quite heinous and malicious um so we're interested to see how that goes and for all of you darling that are at home just wanted to be a viral moment in the comments i'm on your ass okay because a lot of you are spreading misinformation you're retweeting you're resharing because you want likes and you think you're the it girl that is late it is dead it is done darling so you look it up you research there is a whole twitter thread right now of all of kamala's advocacies people don't know that she's been advocating for blacks for hbcus she's really big on black housing and funding for children. So you really need to get into that. She's not the girl that you think that white man told you behind the black face who she was. So you gotta watch the trick of the enemy. But remember to research, darling. Research, research, research. And as we go to research, I am excited to see what the girls have researched for a fragrance of the week. Cause as I do go to the polls, I wanna look good and smell good. So okay. take it over. Okay, okay, okay. All right, guys. So for this week, it was also inspired by our very special guest. So, you know, there's not many friends that I can say, baby, give me a run for my money. But this one right here, the next big thing, if there's one thing that you're going to do, friend, is smell delicious. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So a lot of times, a lot of my recommendations do come. So please, 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 please stop what you're doing right now and follow Frank in the city. Is it on all social platforms, Frank? Yes, it is all, it is on all social platforms because you would definitely get a good recommendation for a good layering fragrance. Okay, that's Rare one friend. thing that Frank is going to give you. Okay, Tell the people because I'm actually about to start doing fragrance content, Frank. Okay, I'm finally okay. about. To, I'm finally okay. about to do it. Okay, we talked about this. Yeah. All right, so for tonight, I decided to go with a a, a it's it's not old, but it, you know this fragrance house is always going to be good to me. I am a fan of YSL, Eve Saint Laurent, honey. She does no wrong in my eyes. All of her fragrances smell good. So I decided to go with the Myself Love Parfum, okay? And this is, oh, she is masculine. She is intense. She is woody. She is floral. She is spicy vanilla bourbon. I mean, the perfect fragrance to wear while you're drinking your espresso martini, okay? This literally... Um, it's one of my favorites. It stays in rotation. Um, I actually just sprayed it on because I wanted to see it last. And Frank, you can chime in and tell me what you feel about what you feel about this one right here. What do you feel about this one? You know what? I think that is such a funny fragrance that you mentioned because that is when I say a go-to, and when I mean go-to, I mean when I'm running out of the house and I'm going out of town. And I need, if I could only take one fragrance with me, that is, she's a fully versatile girl. 
She sure is. Okay. She, sure she is. is good for daytime, nighttime. She's good for a brunch. She's good for a dinner. She is very much so good for errands, good for the plane. She's just really versatile. Depending on how you layer her up, she can stand on her own if you need her to. Um, she doesn't have a super long longevity, but I really just enjoy that it's not offensive to people. It's light. Mm -hmm. It's still breezy. And it just, I feel like sometimes you can take it to hell with a fragrance. And I like to do that as well. Um, so <laughs> I have some of mine. You know, you know, you have I'm your fragrance. You got to uh -uh, uh -uh, come back. You said what? <laughs> Teach well, the girls. You know, Sometimes I take it to hell with my fragrances. <laughs> so I will, I, some, there are very much so times where I want to be a little ignorant. Um, so I want, when I come through the room, I want you to smell me 30 seconds after I pass you. Mm. So there are fragrances that do that. Um, she's not one of them. However, I feel like she does pack a good punch. And I feel like mm. if I had to recommend probably a well-rounded fragrance for like, a man or a woman, because I feel like it's unisex in my opinion. I feel like is. that is. I agree. I don't. I have not told anybody about that that does not like it. She's yeah. Mm. She's fully versatile, but I could talk about fragrances all day. So don't get me started. All day. No, <laughs> seriously. Um, this retails. I want to say the small bottle retails for about eighty nine ninety nine. So it's mm -hmm. it's it's affordable. You know, it's it's again. Remember, girls. I told you it's a parfum, so it does have more of the the oil from the fragrance as opposed to a toilet shout out to the toilets but you said it all friend it, it is definitely a versatile fragrance you can definitely layer it it can stand on its own um again it's it's in a stunning bottle i love i love the bottle that it's in yeah it's love the a bottle. nice contrast it's so convenient cold, so convenient definitely you know falls in your bag put it in your you know yeah i i that has been on my this, list for this a is while my, like second or third bottle like i buy it it's, all the time it's been on my list for a while, and I still haven't. I buy it. I bought it. I don't know why I haven't bought it, um, but I definitely need to go smell it because I, mm. I I I love a good good per cologne perfume. You know, trying to get my collection up, um, but I, I I just haven't bought it yet. Like I, I had a friend, and he told me about it, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna try it, and I haven't bought it. Yet. Go so, smell it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go, go and it. I'm gonna get it because I have a Nordstrom yeah. gift card, and I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna use it. So that might just be how I use it. Yeah, she's yeah. a good girl. Yeah. For the girls that are like me, um, I can attest this is a it's worth the pay. Um because okay. Frank, it's you don't know, it. but I, I'm not the purchaser in the group, surprisingly. Oh god. I'm not. Really? Can you saying that? Can you yeah, stop saying start, that? I'm just being transparent because I know there's somebody listening and watching that can relate. I just want to let that person know this is an okay one to invest in. Remember, we're using the word investing. That's the only way we could convince ourselves to spend more than $40 to $50 on a cologne or a perfume or perfume or toilet paper, toiletry, what you call it? Toilet, toilet. Ooh, toilet. Yeah. Yes. Like don't worry, baby. Let me tell y'all something. Don't get started. If it ain't no habit that you got already, don't get started because then you're gonna get me let me tell you how the shit go. You're gonna start she getting your gonna little get you're gonna start getting your little few, like 40, 50. Then you're gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna go on up to the next tier about 99, a hundred dollars, max 150. Child, then next thing you know, you got all them, and then you're gonna be you're gonna smell some on a bitch, and you're gonna be like, Oh, what's that? She's gonna be like, Oh, it's such and such, it was three hundred dollars. Then next thing you know, you're gonna be standing in the middle of bond number nine in New York City for your birthday, and you're gonna be looking at the damn cash register, bitch, funny when she tells you that the shit is five hundred and forty-five dollars, and you in the middle of the store by yourself, and she was like, Oh, yeah, you were on TV, weren't you? And I was like, Damn, I can't even change my mind about this shit because that bitch <laughs> gonna say that bitch came in here. Hey. And and even get this fragrance. So when I tell you, don't get started. Don't get started. Oh, I'm not because Frank. If had that been me, she would have had to talk about me that day. Because I would have said 500. That's two or three sections I can get. Girl, bye. Bitch, I walked out of there. Oh, I looked at my friend. I said, he said you didn't know it was gonna be that much, did you? I said, bitch, no. <laughs> no, I it was, I just, don't play. I'll just get it from the booster. Oh, I'm but screaming. you know them stuff that don't be real. That's gonna burn your skin off, Frank. Uh -uh, I am uh -uh, uh -uh, You ain't. They got a. They got a booster, Frank. They got a good booster. You booster missed episode honey. one. Episode one. Vaughn <laughs> disclosed our connect. We have a legit booster down south. Yeah, baby, she gets it from the store. She, now she ain't getting I'm no bond, but now she Vaughn can get some like high. YSLs. 
But she this can stuff, get some of the some of the stuff you can find in Ulta. That's what she can get. Us. Anything that you can get Ulta, in the, Sephora, in the, Sephora and the Ulta, she can yeah, get. she can get us those. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> see what I mean. I want to. I'm not gonna be too far above for a booster. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Never. Okay. Never. So these people have came over here and taken so much from our people. Okay. No, so I, I'm gonna cut it if I can cut it. Okay. Let's cut it. No, seriously. Come on, come on, and, and I know you're starting a, um, fragrance reviews and things like that. So I also want to encourage you to check out a good supporter of our show. I wore his um, colognes this weekend and got a lot of compliments, actually. Um, his name is 64 Ian. He's from the DMV. You might have met him, actually, Ian, once mm-hmm. or twice. I think we... Maybe so. I'm going to tell you. I'm gonna tell you when you met him. We was in uh, what's what hookah lounge was in that day? We ran into each other. Won't secrets. Mm. It was the one across the way. Might have been Unity. One mm, of them. Maybe I didn't meet him because I was drunk. That was not. Him. Yeah, we was I drunk and he was with true. me. Mm-hmm. But he has some good sense. So I'm gonna really? send you back. Yeah, I yes. wanna. I'm not, I wanna. I'm getting ready to start pro- the process. Day don't you start screaming. I'm getting ready to start the process of curating okay. my own fragrance. So I would love to support some other I'm people so that are excited. already in the space doing it. What shelf that's gonna be on? It's gonna be a. Uh, it's gonna be uh. It's gonna be not less than 60, 70, oh, that's but not more than one twenty five. It depends. Oh, you know, I really want to give. I really want to give Lux for less. Mm-hmm. Still get a mm-hmm. great scent, but I like. I y'all know I'm I want to send I want the packaging to be nice. Like I want the bottle to be nice. Yeah, so that's what yeah. makes the scent go up a little bit. I don't want right. to sacrifice on that, but I also don't want people to feel like they gotta spend two hundred dollars on my fragrance to smell good. Not mm-hmm. not right now. So yeah, because I'm gonna just go to the person with the oils and I'm gonna say, Can you give me that Frank one? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's gonna I'm it's gonna be I'm gonna I'm gonna get it together. We're gonna we gonna be the right thing. Okay, right, well, y'all. so that's the fragrance. How exciting is fragrances? Yes, hmm. that's exciting. That's the fragrance for the week. Y'all tell me if y'all like it. Please make sure to comment in the post and let us know if you have this. If you have the fragrance or you got went and got any of the fragrances that I feature for this season, it's been so many. I don't know how I'm gonna outdo myself next. Well, there's always more fragrances to buy, and unfortunately, yes. I got the bug. So right now, I'm in the 300 range. Uh, yeah, oh. that, that, that's where I'm at right now with it. I'm, I'm eyeing this Louis Vuitton. Oh, I just got imagination. Oh Ooh. my! It's it's on my it's on my list. It's on my list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just got to bartend a little hard. The imagination is it, it smells so good. And imagine me buying it. That's all oh, I'm gonna do. So imagine good. me buying it. <laughs> well, I tell you, it made me want to turn back around and eat my own ass. <laughs> I ain't even lying. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, she does smell good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I was that, bad, I want to me too. Okay. <laughs> That's all you need, a little fifty dollars to pick them up, and they come with travel sizes. When you get the big bottle, I get the travels. We 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 before Ian, but you know we, we no. like what we like. All right, let's. Every go. girl, every every girl loves to smell good. Every girl has to smell good. But Please. one thing we haven't talked about all season, and I think it's time we finally dive into this topic. We are Thick Talk Podcast, darling. We are founded on the principles of being larger than the normal, bigger than the regular, and grander than the grand dames themselves. So tonight, we talk body positivity. And I'm like, you know, now, if you're one of them girls that don't believe the big girls get discriminated against, the door is closed. But I'll turn it over to Vaughn as I try to do my best with introducing because I need a drink. Oh. <laughs> Okay, think of let's get into it. Let's talk body party. Let's talk from a thick point of view. Um, so uh, we went back and forth a couple of times. What do we want to discuss this week? At first, we was take, thinking maybe like you know just about our being the single friend, you know, um, things of that sort. But now we're gonna just get rid of some of these thick myths, honey, because it's not what you think it's all cracked up to be. Um, but so yes, without further ado, let's go into some of the actual questions that we have today. So. First question is kind of more so just from your own perspective of like, how do you define body positivity for yourself? Anybody want to go first? Our guests want to go first, Frank? Sure, I can. Um, Body positivity to me, um, I think has meant something different for me 
in every different season of my life. Um, so I think what it looked like for me last year, it doesn't look like that for me this year. Um, so I think right now my definition would be being positive in my body, no matter what it looks like. Um, cause I work out and my body has changed. Um, other people appreciate my body more now as it begins to change because things start to accentuate and, mm -hmm. Um, while that's great and all, when I'm 30 pounds heavier, I don't want my idea of what I feel about myself being about how other people perceive me. Mm -hmm. And I think in the past, I was, okay, I'm going to be body positive because I want other people to think I like myself way more than I actually do so that they will like me. But I didn't really... I was body positive, but I really wasn't positive in my body because I wasn't being positive with myself. I mm -hmm. wasn't being positive about how I felt in my body. And I wasn't positive about the fact that I could just even move my body. So I think body positive right now means that I like what my body looks like today. Um, I've been practicing more being where my feet are. Um, so that could change tomorrow. I don't think it has to be a one size fits all. Um, and I think, yeah, tomorrow I might be like, bitch, I need to do 30 more crunches because I don't like how my stomach is sitting out today. And that's fine, too, tomorrow. But today mm -hmm. I'm like, bitch, you kind of taking it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it changes. It changes with me. I agree. I agree 100 percent. Like even for me, I think back to, you know, uh, times when I was working out really heavy um, and I had lost a lot of weight. And just like the outside people saying, like, you know, I got to go home and see my family. They like, oh, you need to eat. You're getting too small. Like, you know, and just thinking about stuff like that now that I am have gained weight again. I'm like, y'all have made me eat again. OK, because <laughs> I was doing very good. <laughs> Here I am over here eating too much. So yeah. <laughs> just thinking about stuff like that, um, it also like deters how you know you think how you feel about your body and things of that sort. So that that also leads me to the next question. I don't know if Dave or T T Nail had anything to say on that topic. Body positivity, sure. Um, <laughs> why not? You know? Um, no, um, seriously, I think for me, um, and I speak for me because mm, like you said, we fluctuated a lot with weight, um, but I've always been a bigger person. Um, so even down to being a kid and my mom in the middle of JC Penney's when it's back to school, tells them, you still need this husky, right? Why are we saying that out loud? Oh, that Why husky is triggering. Husky. <laughs> husky. I'm in husky. It's boot cut. It's all wrong. Echo Unlimited shirt. Why? Why are we dressing me up like the trade? And it took a long time for me to really understand what body positivity is. And because it's so easy to fake it. It's so easy to be a big girl and fake body positivity because we just want to look or appear as confident. So we just kind of like, oh, yeah, girl, I'm not fine. Then we get home and we're like, fuck, I hate mm -hmm. this. I'm single because I'm fat. I'm this because I'm big. We start blaming ourselves for this. We start buying stuff for niggas when they want to meet us. We start treating people to dinners and stuff. We become the ass of the joke. Now, I, I, we I, I, okay. we're not genuinely being the body positivity. For me, I'm going to say for me, I ain't going to say for the girls, body positivity for me became when I got past that phase and I said, look, this is what I look like. More than likely, unless I go get surgery or I get on that heavy Ozempic, that Manjaro, this ain't going away tomorrow. Or next month. And even still, do I want to look like that? Do I want to have a bobblehead? No, because my body ain't meant to be that. I'm happy with who I am. And when I say happy, I don't wear a t-shirt in a pool. I don't put on a white beater when I'm going to a party. Baby, I dress for Devin like I'm the girl with the six pack. And so body positivity became when I was able to say, I'm not a big boy. I'm just T-nail. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And baby, if y'all are out there buying these men, men stuff. Because you big and you think that that's what's going to keep that nigga at the house. Bitch, if you don't put that motherfucking car up and make him pull his car out of his pocketbook. Because I'm not buying. Uh-uh. A damn uh, thing. Don't, uh, even get, don't even wrap your mind around it. That, that's even, what the big girls do. Listen, I have <laughs> had people try, try me like that. 
And I really be like, baby, we have to have a come to Jesus me. I don't know if we need to get in a corporate group chat or what, but it needs to stop because see, when they get to this bus stop, they realize, baby, I don't, t- I, I don't, I don't, I don't do that. Uh, but I be feeling like other other people do it. So yeah, when it gets, it's like, oh, you supposed to do that too? And uh, uh-uh, uh, we gonna pump the brake on that, baby, because uh, uh-uh, you gonna pull your, you will pull your card out. Before yeah. I pull my card out, and that's, on that. and that's on that. Mm-hmm. Now, let's be clear. Are you before we get to that? Because I got to put context to this. What do you identify as as a sexual preference? And what do you mean? Like, am I a top or a bottom? Oh, verse. We don't forget about <laughs> the no man. Well, you know, I would say, I would say, you know, I'm really in a season of figuring that out. Um, oh, I love that. I'm in, season, I'm in a season of figuring that out. I'm nobody's uh um top 100 percent Like that's okay. not me. Um, but do I like to go in the back though sometimes instead of the front? Yeah. Is it often? Absolutely not. <laughs> but I, I like to go back there sometimes and you know, see what's back there. You gotta go dust off some things and open up the door, and, you know, make sure the stuff is working. Mm-hmm. Uh okay. so yeah. You know, we figuring it out. I, it, I had to get that context because I feel like that changes the dynamic. Because I think um, there's two verse on stage. There's a verse bottom, and we have now you verse curious is what I call that. Uh, verse oh, curious. that's what it's called. I've been looking for it. I've been looking for what that name is. Okay, I'll yeah. take that. <laughs> who, who's the verse bottom? You. Oh. <laughs> girl, the girls are telling me stuff about myself, buddy. I don't even know. <laughs> oh, the girl is the full bottle, buddy. The girl, see, this week, we listen. We getting back to the agenda again. That, what we talked about with Lamont last week. That verse agenda. The girls trying to make everybody verse. I am a bottle. No, no, no. You that's said it, that's all. you. You said you was kind of doing the same thing. Doing a little, trying a little more, do a little more. You yeah, know, you know, a little nibble here, nibble there. You know, nothing too crazy. I'm open you, to, you I yeah. am open to the, you know, what you call it, but I'm about penetration. It. Yes, Ooh, yeah. you might be a bottom because you could barely say the word penetration. You might be a bottom. I'm one thousand percent a bottom. I'm gay, uh, but I only ask that, um, Frank, because that also to me changes the path of being bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, because you know, I feel like bigger people. I, y'all can make an attest because I think most of us came out. We're not came out, but we were kind of gay early. Um, then some. We weren't thirty years old when we kind of did this. And it was like I had two routes when I became like openly. It was be the big messy loud girl, or mm-hmm. be the big daddy that got money that spend it. And that's not what I wanted, but that's what I felt like culture gave me. Especially mm. thanks to Noah's Ark and other shows that always made the big girl the loud, messy one. Mm-hmm. Always. Always. So that's why I kind of asked that because I feel like that changed your journey. That changed your projection. And, you know, and oh, to, yeah. the, to the girls that's out there, if you're listening or watching, if you are paying for people's stuff, stop it. I agree with Frank, but I can't say that I haven't done it. I took a whole nigga to brunch one time. It was time to pay. He looked at me. I pulled a card out because I'm at brunch <laughs> with. One of the one of the finest niggas in DC. Wow. Then we turn around and <laughs> my birthday weekend, he had no money again. And I told him, that's on you, dog. And after that, I ain't see him no more. Yeah. But mm. and it's nothing wrong with it. It's nothing, nothing wrong, wrong with it, but it. it needs to be. I'm not, it needs to be reciprocated. Yeah, I was gonna say I I'm did. a I'm a Dutch girly for sure. If yeah. you want to go Dutch when we first meet in girl. Let's do that. But when it comes to like down the line, if you're not pulling out your car before I pull out mine, baby, I don't yeah. know. Something is just wrong. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm giving you the wrong impression that, that I'm not t- I'm not the type of girl that I want to be taken care of. And mm-hmm. I am her. I want to be taken care of. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now nah, it's not a requirement, but it's not. It mm-hmm. it would be nice. It, it would be, be nice. nice. But I don't okay. I don't mind paying I don't mind. I think now as an adult, I think people also have to realize like you need to I don't know if we're going off topic, but I feel like as an adult dating in my 30s i have to be honest about the fact that dating looks different for me now because i can afford to do different things right and so that is what it that is why being equally yoked is important because mm-hmm. i now we can go out to dinner and on one night we may spend 89 dollars. we also may go out to dinner and one night the bill is 350 dollars. 
And wow. I don't, it doesn't necessarily mean like I won't pay for the $350 dinner and you pay for the $89 dinner. But at some point, I'm not going to be the only one paying for the $350 yeah. dinner. Like it has to be balanced. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't, they ain't giving that. Damn. And that's what I like to do. So that's why dating, yeah. dating with intention is important because it's like, I don't, I want to go to Del Frisco's. I don't got to go every week. I know people that do go like eat out like that every single night. Mm -hmm. I don't want to yeah. do that. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I don't think I really even want to probably get there, but it's like, yeah. do I want to go to Del Frisco's and spray on my good $400 cologne once a month and put on me a little gotcho? Okay. I had a nasty gotcha. I want <laughs> sparkling water or steel. Yes. And do I want to sit down and you order three things and I order three things and I nibble off your plate and you nibble off mine and I sit back and wait on the bill to come? Absolutely. And I want to be able to do that for somebody too, but I'm not just yeah. out here doing and yeah. Yeah. I ain't getting done. Yeah, I, I, I feel you because I definitely want to sit down and eat like Tevin, our producer, is eating right now. Whatever he is eating, I mean, y'all, he is tearing it up. Shout to out to the you. floor. Give that. Baby, because I ain't ate dinner, so I hope it's good to him. Me either. It's me a plate waiting on me. Ooh. And as a big girl, I tell you right now, anytime a man want to get to me, let's go somewhere good to eat. I'm not one of the folks. What Queen Latifah said, my favorite movie, Just Right. No she salad, said, eat salad, chick. eat chick. Okay? Because <laughs> if I'm a... I will eat a salad and then order the ultimate smokehouse combo with the ribs, the sausages, and the brisket. And I will still go to the house and... <laughs> okay. You got a three-hour window. Okay, the girls know they body, honey. Okay. First lady, I know, first lady. I know my body. <laughs> first lady, that was a little too much. That was the vulgar girl. Well, Ooh, she done already said something. I was a verse bottom, so he okay. he done took it there. <laughs> okay, we that's already know what that's about to win. Ain't yeah. no point in trying to drive back now. We can't go back, girl. <laughs> uh -uh, we done, we done crossed over. I done already the girls been crossed the bridge, weekend. honey. I already kissed a stranger this weekend. What's next? You know what I'm oh, saying? But geez. no, I just I just kind of want to have that little spinoff because I know being a bigger person, there are some people that aren't where we are now. So it, they quickly slip into that. I got to pay for this, man. Or I mean, because you know, y'all know how it go. It go from, hey, can I get $10 for gas today? To, hey, you want to buy me lunch today? To, oh my God. And, you, and I'm going to tell you, I've seen it so many times. I know what to look for. And I know y'all can attest. You'll text, what's up? Hey, what you doing? Man, I'm just going through it. Here we go. What's wrong? I need about sixty five dollars for my phone bill, or I'm they trying to get this done. Through. Trying to do that. Always some And what story. they do, it's like a scammer. They start off with a dollar, a couple of dollars, and before you know it, to you that are watching or listening, you ask me paying a rent, okay, mm -hmm. or a car note, and you like, why am I doing this? And he only come to you at night, and y'all don't go nowhere. Yeah, manipulation. And he not even the L. Oh yeah, baby, no. You better understand. And they prowl on us. They prowl on bigger people. Oh yeah. I think a lot. I think I I I I agree. I think that that does happen a lot. Like even with me, I, I um was messing with a DL boy not too long ago, and um of course he was a little younger. So like I try to understand that you know people these situations are different, you know, and also being in you know more urban environment, sometimes it just don't happen. So like he definitely did start like you said, TJ started off asking like five dollars, ten dollars, girl. One time he asked me for twenty dollars. I said, let me tell you something, sir. I am not that girl. <laughs> like, if you can't even ask me how my day is going, and you can't even hold a conversation with me, uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't think you have to, you don't even have to, you know, come and be, be with me every day. But if you can't even hold a conversation, but you want to text me and ask me for some money, I take care of enough people I do not need nobody else to take care of, okay? I am good, but love. I take care of my family. And that's it. They're the only people that can ask me uh, for $20 and I can give it to them and don't care about it. You're not going to, okay. I'm sorry. It don't give that. I had to cut it off real fast. Like, sir, no. If you want to come and see me, that's one thing. But if you think you're about to be asking me for twenty dollars, it's not happening. It's mm -hmm. just not happening. I don't want you to get into the habit of doing that. Like it's it's just not normal for me. So I do it when people, you know, I care about people. But yeah, it's not gonna give every time we talk and you you want to message me about some money. I ain't gonna do that. You work every day, come, sweetie. Come <laughs> after mouse. Can I get seven dollars and twenty five cents? No. What? Did you get a job? It's Girl, just a I hate trade. I, I really hate the deal. I mean, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> what a passion. It's, with a a it's, it's the Butch Queens. The Butch Queens do the same. The girls See, do the I, same I don't deal with those. So I don't know. Oh, I think I'm being targeted right now. <laughs> We're going to keep you in Excuse prayer. me? 
Yeah, I think I'm being targeted because I recently started talking to someone and it was all cool and dandy at first, but from the jump, it was it's always something, not asking mm. for something, but something's always wrong. Yeah, that oh, yeah, is related to enough. financial things. Yeah, and I think enough. I think that person is waiting on me to be like, oh, I'll give you that $75. Or oh, I'll do that yeah, tire. Or oh, I'll help you. And I want to be like, um, if you're not giving up whatever it yeah. is that yeah. you I, I I have already put you in a box, and yeah. that box is not relationship, and I just feel like I'm not giving anybody anything from my hard earned pocketbook. Ain't happening. Uh-uh. So I'm just like already, I'm like, mm, every time I talk to you, something is wrong. You are waiting yeah. on me. That but I feel like that is I've had somebody that has had a like permanent sugar daddy for like a long time. And they say you start out like that's how you started out. Like you gotta yeah. let them know, like in the beginning, like, oh, I need help. I need this. And if you look a certain way, a lot of times it gets you that because people want mm -hmm. that attention from you. So it's yeah. like, okay, you you are attractive. Now I wanna I wanna I want you to stay around real bad. And I think it goes back to what Vaughn was saying about like we're being we we are targeted. Yeah. Yeah, we are. And most of, us, most of us have I don't care what I said. We big girl so we big talk about the big boys tonight. Most of us that are bigger are in our careers. We are have the money because we didn't rely on being light skinned and pretty to do what we needed to do. These girls are educated. They work hard. Most of the big girls got three, four jobs. Even if they don't have the one that's paying, they're going to still have the money. They are savers. And this is just my experience. It's not what's true. And I'm going to tell you what woke me up out of that because our questions kind of are, we're kind of walking through our questions. What woke me out of not being that girl is, I'm not going to lie, and if she watching, I'm not talking about you in a bad way. I don't know if y'all remember the app Clubhouse. There yeah. was a bigger girl on Clubhouse, and she, my sis is big, and she got caught up one time with this guy, with a couple of guys. She had bought one guy's soundboard. Now, this is what stuck with me. She bought him a soundboard. It came out on Clubhouse. The boy played him and already had got the soundboard, played him for money. The big girl posted her cash app. She was sending this man lunch. She was, have a great day. Here's $20 for breakfast. And I was so embarrassed for my sister. And <laughs> I, said that day, I will never do that again. Mm -hmm. You will, because I'm mm -hmm. like, that boy really played her. Mm -hmm. He was on there like, yeah, I'd use you. And you did it, dummy. Yeah, I don't want your big ass. Oh. Mm. Oh, oh but I listen, I got a story about that. Don't get Those me fighting started. Words. Those are fighting words. I'm just saying. I when so, I tell you, I will be ready to run down on the nigga. Dave fell out because he know what I'm talking about. That's why he fell yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the only reason why I'm falling out. So for those of you that are listening or watching behind the scenes, this is hilarious. I cannot believe you just said that. But first lady is on a road tonight. The espresso martini is martini in, okay? I just got to <laughs> give that disclaimer for all the people. But yes, all joking aside, and this is this is really not meant for shade. So if she is listening. Not at all. It, we love you. We really do. Yeah, we do. Um. But it was a lesson. It, it definitely was a lesson. So you're saying it, friend. I'm also receiving that it was a lesson, too, because, bitch, it gagged me. I said, wait a minute. Gag. Hold it. She Gag. was spending money like that? I did not know. How much money that. was it? We're going to say it's over $500. Literally. Mm. And, and, and keep in mind. In a short yeah, amount of time. In a short and, amount and, of time. I was about to say, and it was short. And this is really what gagged me about the situation. When that happened, the Me Too movement came out. There were two other guys that was like, oh, yeah, she been sending me money, too. Fly yep. me out. One guy, she flew out to see her. He didn't even want to touch her. Oh! He had the nerve to get in, his, in her bed with his clothes on. Oh! And he flew it on the plane. Oh! And yo, outside and it clothes. Gags you yes, it gags you because these girls are that brave. They don't care. So they got on Clubhouse and said, yeah, we use you. It, we it, did it this. was nasty. And I said, then I'm good. And to those who are listening, when y'all got friends that are using people, call them out. That shit. It's call, not them out. Them out. call them out. Call them people out, bro. Call them it's out. not it. Mm -mm. It's not cutting at all. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Lord, we're going to pray over our sister in Jesus' yes. name. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, but that also all that because this happens. It happens. It does. And also that kind of leads me into my next thing of like, how do we kind of like get rid of some of these uh these um kind of things that are myths about around big guys big like man. like we was just talking about the you know think we're going to automatically pay for things or think we're going to do this or think we're lazy think we're you know it's just so many things that is wrapped around in the bigger guy um stipulation so how, how do we kind of get together to get rid of that stipulation uh frank you lead this one um, <laughs> i think it goes back to setting bound you have to set boundaries and I think I don't I'm fearful that mm, I don't want to say it. I'm going to say it. I, I'm fearful that it may not change. Um, I'm fearful that it may not change because while I have not done and participated in a lot of those things that my sisters and brothers have done, um, I feel like at the age of 31 right now, I'm in my era of any man I really want. I can have him and I don't have to do nothing extra Correct. like and if you're unable to be with me because of a thing like my size then you're not supposed to be with me and that takes a very uh developed mindset shift to make when you understand that hey my experiences while dating men is not favorable because we live in a society that is really focused on looks, especially in the gay community, like being a black gay man, nobody's gonna raise their hand and say, oh, I wanna be fat. Nobody will ever do that. I don't even think, I think if you could ask me right now, if I was younger, like would I have chosen to be fat? I don't think anybody would choose to mm -hmm. be this, but I think because this is the card we have been dealt, we've learned how to deal with it and I think that developed mindset comes from years and years of not having that kind of like self worth. I think that's what it kind of correlates back to for me. Um, and that's just me and my personal experience. I feel like it will, t it took a lot for me to get here. Um, so I'm like, I feel like maybe the cycle is going to continue because we're older now. Mm -hmm. Um, but I remember back in the day, I'll be like, damn, like I'm single cause I'm fat and that sucks. Like, I really would, you know, put up with being in a situation ship because it wasn't, I was like, oh, I'm just happy to have a man around because I'm not supposed to have, I don't, I'm I, I'm lucky to have mm -hmm. you. It's how I, I used to think. Yeah. And I never thought until the era I'm in right now. And right now, I mean, like probably this year, I really am like, bitch, it's me. Like, you are lucky to have me. You're lucky to have me on your arm it's not flip like granted you may be a prize but bitch i am too and i think that takes i'm 31. Yeah. i've always felt like i was a little teen you know i feel like i could dress a little cute kept my hair done kept my nails did but right. bitch, i'm really t now okay and it has nothing to do with me losing a few pounds or you know having a little bit more change in my purse like holistically i know who who i am and what i bring to the table and i feel like we have to we have to set the standard within ourselves because the people around us aren't gonna set it. Like everybody always everybody doesn't think we're favorable or desirable. We have to set that standard in our own house. And yeah, I think having more conversations like this, like hearing people see, hearing people say, like, oh, I used to think like that. I don't think like that anymore. This is how I set boundaries. I think us us verbalizing and saying like oh well yeah we may have paid for a little something you know let somebody move in with us you know we made mistakes along the way but we've learned from that hmm who said that oh well i have a little story about how this guy yeah it was one of, i i did get used in that capacity so i yeah it was it's you live and you learn i was a fresh 20 i was a fresh 22 and for two Why? weeks it was yeah, a lie. Never mind. I, I almost said I ain't never did that, but you right. Mm -hmm. They will try to move in with you. Oh, baby, <laughs> baby. And then told me afterwards that he used me because he was in a, he needed somewhere to live. But that's the crazy mm -hmm. part, how they be so bold. They don't care. And I hate when a girl say, oh, well, skinny girls got a heart too. Them girls will never ever deal with the stuff we deal with oh, no. even down to what you just said and preached about right there all of what you said is so valid 
social media, um, media, and I don't know if it'll ever change. Um, because you know, we see the girls now, everybody's dying before I even get there. Let me tell you, ain't nothing aggravate me more right now. And Dave will tell you because we joke about it all the time. I'm over the whole I lost weight and now I'm just so happy. So ain't none of y'all happy before. None of y'all. None, none of y'all. The weight was on you that bad, baby. It was Everybody. just so bad. <laughs> it was so Everybody hard. Was so bad. Was so bad. Now I mean, so I ain't gonna sit up here and lie. It ain't great. It ain't. It's not. It ain't great. Mm -hmm. It ain't like oh my god, but it ain't, bitch. It was really that bad for you, bitch. Bitch, it was so really that bad. Girls, when they lose that weight, you get this long post. Oh, I was so depressed, and I'm just so glad I came out of that. Please get healthy. Please get care about yourself. Girl, I go to the doctor. I do care about myself. But I also know one thing. If you ain't changed the inside, you can lose all the weight you want to, boo. Mm -hmm. You just lost you're a nasty weight. Girl, you're a nasty girl. <laughs> yeah, now your happy is external. But if you wasn't happy then, you still got to figure out a lot of stuff inside. Mm -hmm. Um, I, And I, I just say that to say that. But social media, I do agree with you. Like, I don't know if it'll ever change. Um, I am a girl that goes to a lot of deviant events. And when I say this deviant, this is what all love and support, so don't try me. But Ooh. with all love and support, I love deviant. And it to me, I still am not convinced that they understand the influence they have on this topic. Um, and I only say that because they do well with using... It's like they find a big girl and they just stick with it. I'm like, I went to a party. I'm like, it was so many big girls. And not being funny, child, why I ain't featured on the page yet? Um, and there are other pages that I will, no, I don't care. I'll mention them. Native on Native Sun, I think it's called. I'd be one more bigger people to be featured on there. It these, and I say feature because there are people out here doing the same thing that you're posting others about. And what's crazy is social media. Let me point this out. Y'all make big girls have to do so much in fashion. We have to literally fashion every day for y'all to even recognize us or repost us. But you will go post a girl with a t-shirt and jean shorts on your page as if she did not get that outfit off of the front page of ASOS. Stop it. Stop making us have to do 500 miles to get recognized. That is crazy to me. And it happens so much. Oh, it's Fashion Fridays. And you got these basic girls. Meanwhile, I can go to Frank in the City page. I can go to Big Waves page. I can go to these people's page with followers that you can see. Yeah. Even I have even had moments where we tag and send it in and no response. Even Fix Talk Podcast. I have tagged Gay Magazine, comment to Gay Magazine. You don't got to feature me on a post, but you could have posted me on my story on your own that story by now. Or you could respond. Other girl. It's not even I'll about. Respond. It's not even yeah. about that. It's a, It's more of the response. You know what I'm saying? I think that if you have a platform, you do have a responsibility to respond. You know what I mean? And and just just say hey, just say thank you so much for yeah. your submission. You know, we'll get to it. We'll check it out. You know, sometimes I feel like we have to almost fight to just be at the top. And uh, as yeah. a big as a bigger person, I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of fighting for clothes. I'm tired of fighting for opportunities. I'm tired of fighting to just, I'm fighting. I'm, I'm constantly mm -hmm. fighting. So sometimes my tolerance is very low. So anybody that knows that comes into my, my DMs, I really don't have a lot of time for foolishness. It's either you talking about money or you talking about nothing. That's it. That's really how I, yeah. I am with it. And I, and I, maybe I'm a little jaded because, you know, I, I, I am, I am a little mature, 35 years old, but I, I'm tired of fighting. Seriously. Like, honestly. So yeah, I think yeah. that does grind my gears. I do I do have to agree with my fellow castmate. It's something that we see far too often. And, you know, we, we got to change the stigma. Um, I do feel a little bit the same way that Frank feels that, you know, I don't know if it's going to change. But I do feel that the stigma really starts with just the conversations and just really, really, really holding each other accountable. We mm -hmm. got to have these conversations more in these type of spaces. Yeah. Or just even at brunch on Sunday Funday, like we don't gotta talk about you know Real Housewives all the time. We could talk about this, like you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I think that the more the conversation happens, is the more it starts to make people be like, you know what? I ain't never seen it from your shoes, sis. I ain't never put them on. Right. I, I, did, I didn't realize that that's kind of what it is. So that's my goal. Mm -hmm. It's to kind of, you know, sometimes you gotta pop out and show that yeah. these are the conversations that need to happen, literally. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was. It's a two-way street. Yeah, for sure. 
Frank, you was about to say something. I was just about to say, yeah, the the fight is is rough. It's rough, rough, rough. It is rough. It and is. I, you know, even where I think people look at where I am now and be like, oh, like he finally like made it, and it is still rough. Mm -hmm. It is still rough. I am. I literally be fighting tooth and nail. So every campaign you see, that's why I'm like, Lord, please let this let this do well. Let this, you know, I'm not even like agencies. I don't have no big management team behind me. I do everything myself. Um, sure. And people are always shocked by that. Um, but everything I get is because God literally sent it to me. And I've been in I've been in rooms where they tell me, oh, well, you know, maybe you should have to, maybe you got to do a little more or. You know, maybe you should do this or you should do it this way. And I'm just like, so me getting myself on a TV show and winning that show and then me also being featured on another top 10 Netflix series and turning my platform into a six figure business. that I, That's not enough. That's not enough. Me showing up and me doing the work is not enough. It's not. I can't. And if. I just, if you follow other content creators, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. I can't, I if mean. I had to do a campaign for this lip gloss, I can't just sit down and talk about this lip gloss or, you know, post it. I have to get videographers. I have to do a skit. I can't just be like, you got to make sure your yeah. haircut is on point. You got to make sure the outfit is on point. You yeah. Have to correct. I so have to be 10 times better. Yes. But we're in that right now because look at TikTok podcasts. There are other podcasts right now. They get up here with a tank top on, half ass in, and they get you know they're getting more attraction on these sites and platforms. We've come with themes, outfits, everything, every episode. But once again, social media. When you look at gay movies and gay TV shows, the bigger people are always messy, loud. Look at Sisters BT, messy, loud. Brian is playing somebody that's very just stereotypical. Noah's art. Big girl, loud, messy, dramatic. We always we put, we can never stuff. be the cool yeah. one. We can never be the CEO. We can never be the desired. Let's be real. Let's be real tonight. As we wrap up this conversation, the desirability that social media has put out for bigger people is lackluster. We're the best ones at sex. Okay. The warmest hole. Okay. <laughs> Y'all showing you girls are on. Okay, I was gonna say you girls Ooh, are on man. tonight. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I agree. Like that's why I really it was my the only thing I wanted to do when I went on the circle is make sure that I was not messy, I wasn't catty, I wasn't mm -hmm. I wasn't the stereo the stereotypical gay. I was not. I said I want to come on here and entertain as if I'm Nene Leaks on an episode of Housewives mm -hmm. and make people laugh and make people feel good and make people be inspired to dream. Like, could I have could I have went back and forth with a lot of them girls on that screen? Yeah, absolutely. 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 Because when that boy drew that snack of me, I told them to cut the cameras off and then I went off. So anything I'm saying, y'all yeah. can't record and use because yeah. I don't yeah. want to be I don't want to be you, showcased in that so way. Well. But yeah, so well, yeah, and it was, and that's why I that's why because of what you just said, like that's why when I was on like how to get rich, like I wanted to make sure like people see, oh, he wants to be this big time content creator, like a Jackie Ina or you know, a makeup Shayla, and you know, I do and I will get there, but mm -hmm. I have to work 10 times harder. But I, I need people to see it so mm -hmm. that other people can see it can happen and i need other people that look like me to be like it's happening for him it can Why? happen for me and we don't have that that person that thing that representation that's why i take what i do very seriously because we don't have the um the last person we had that i'm trying to be is andre leon talley in the spaces moving and shaking yes. doing the work visibility on point like that's what i'm trying that's the brand mm -hmm. who is frank in the city i'm trying to get there like yeah, i'm trying to be able to time. you know entertain and do what i need to do but it ain't it ain't easy it ain't easy no and, 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 but I, but I gotta and, say it's this. one of the topics that you can just really yeah talk about all day long because we have had 
so many to me yeah, this fumbles is part in the two. industry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely part two season two. Um, but we fumble. I feel like the culture of gay community has fumbled so many bigger people oh, because we, we we just can't get over the fact that they don't have the six pack and they're not the conventional is what I say, the conventional gay. Mm-hmm. And we've missed some very talented people and overlooked some people. Um, and I'm going to let Big Waves swim on this, but as we wrap up the topic to get your brains going, how do you navigate being the big girl of the group? But I'll let Dave talk and then we'll wrap up with that. Well, no, I just wanted to say just real quick to what Frank said. Um, I, I, I have not, and Netflix don't kill me, I have not watched The Circle since my friend had to whine. I think I tried I to either. watch it last season. Um, but honestly, and I think this even ties into just being who you are is enough, you know? And I, I think me, me and Von talk all the time. We, we all talk all the time. And, you know, I joke around and I always say the song, be who you are for your pride. But literally the key to this is literally showing up and realizing that who you are is enough. And that's what you did, Frank. That's literally what you did. You was your 100% self. You, it was nothing that you put on. It was nothing that you did differently. You literally was like, you know what? I'm just going to go in there and be me. And, and that is literally the reason why God said, here you go. It was just your time, baby. It was just your time. Yeah. But what I wanted to say to that was just that even though you're trying to become the next Andre Leon Talley, we got to support you. We got to mm-hmm. realize that mm-hmm. it's enough space in the industry for all of us. You know what I'm saying? If we really came together and just really supported each other like we should, we would be so much better. We would be Mm -hmm. so much better. We'd be light years ahead. Because at the end of the day, baby, when you do something, it's a win for you, but it's a win for me too. Mm -hmm. When you won the circle, I said, bitch, I won the circle. I won the circle. (laughs) Like somebody that looks like me, somebody that has been through what I have gone through, that's had some of the same exact feelings. Just won the circle, bitch. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. What was the question? I'll answer it first. (laughs) So as we wrap up this conversation, because we're definitely need a part two of this. So Frank, be on the lookout in the fall because we're definitely discuss more of this as we get cozy with teddy bears. Maybe we'll do something around teddy bears around the time. Mm -hmm. But um, I want to just say, how do you navigate being the big friend? Um, and I say that because we often find ourselves to have friends that, of course, don't look like us. So they're the conventional gays. And sometimes they call you for validation or, you know, sometimes they feel like, damn, girl, like, OK, I didn't get you them compliments. What you doing by me? Or you go out and you're talking to a guy and they just come stepping your toes. Or how do you navigate being the big girl as we wrap up this conversation? So I, in my friendship, I, I think my friends do a really good job at not really saying that like i'm not labeled as the big girl in the in the friend in the friend group um i really do have to shout out my mom and i really do have to shout out my family in general um they really made sure that they told me all the time you you are fine you are handsome you are like i literally always say i come from love and honestly that's the love that you see that is before me sometimes i have to remind myself that i'm the big guy or the big girl or whatever you want to call it because that 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 title is just not it's not something i kind of take on and i wear on my chest you know what i'm saying i'm dave i've always said i've always said to myself what has being bigger stopped me from doing what has it stopped me from Nathan. doing it has literally not stopped me from doing anything so I, too, have that little bit of cockiness. You can call it what you want, my little confidence, my little swag. But y'all see the material. <laughs> okay. uh, you can go, Frank, if you if you have anything to add. Um, well, I just feel like, I don't know, like, no shade to my friends, but I'm just a tease. So, I mean, I really don't. <laughs> I be feeling like, bitch, how y'all feel about the big girl in the group? Okay. <laughs> I, can get, I can get them too. You want to jump? We can jump. We can we can play the little game. There have been times like that somebody has been interested in me that my friend that my friends were interested in. Um, so I'm kind of like, I'm in the season now of I am the way I take care of, I literally do so much work on myself so that I can feel my best. And I get my nails done. I get my feet done. I keep my hair cut. I try to look good. I look presentable. I smell good. It's not really the only thing 
it, it's not really about me like being the big friend if that mm -hmm. makes sense to me like in my head i'm like i got a big old butt like if a nigga got the confidence to get behind me you know like that's t but if not that's yeah. not a me thing um i just yeah i feel like it only feels like different when I have to explain to them about my experiences. So, mm. you know, I quite often have to explain to people like dating, this could be a series, dating while fat in D in the DMV, in one of the most pretentious places in the in the world when it comes to black gays, it's hard. It is not that it it is not that it is impossible. It is just like to me, it's like finding a needle in a haystack to me like mm -hmm. finding a good experience i can find experiences let's be clear but finding a good dating experience is a little bit more challenging because it's not it, i could be in the club with 100 men and only 10 feel like they would be attracted to a big guy mm -hmm. and probably only five feel like i'm gonna be open and honest in the public and go talk to that. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. I can't wait to crop that part. Yeah, that's the truth. Because yeah, of, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fight you on that. Out of a hundred, fifty of them will come meet you, like that boy said back in the day, at the back door. Oh, seventy five. Let you in. Seventy five. Yeah. What that girl that was a gay dating coach when um Micah from Atlanta said, because she's a fitness guru. Oh, I'm drunk because I'm being messy now. She was a fitness guru. And she said, oh, I don't want to date a big girl, but we could definitely get it on. But you got to come through the back door. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and see, I don't I don't do back doors, side doors, windows or cars. Baby, if I can't come in the front door with my head held high, I'm not coming. OK. And you should you should want, bitch, you quiet as kept. You need to walk out of your house and come meet me at my car and escort me into your home. That's what I deserve. And that's how I that's okay. my mindset. Like. That's the standard that I have for myself. And if you can't meet me with those type of experiences, that's your business. That's that's not a concern of mine because, bitch, I know what's happening when I get inside. I know what I when I'm coming inside. I know what's coming inside. Mm -hmm. honey, Meanwhile, they got a, honey, they got two roommates honey, and no car. They not even. Honey, <laughs> let's get Girl, into it. Please. <laughs> honey. Okay. Von, Von, how do you feel about being the bigger friend? Uh, I don't know how I feel like. I have always been the bigger friend, you know? So, I mean, especially I think when I got to college and I don't, I don't, I never really had a lot of gay friends. I've always just had girlfriends. So when it comes to like uh, dating and stuff like that, it really couldn't like, you know, they, they couldn't get down with what I was, I was talking about at the time. Um, but just like the way I navigate and move in life in general, I don't think that I, I can really feel or they feel as if I'm the big friend. I think I feel it more than they do um just because like they're petite girls they're small you know got on bathing suits looking real cute and granted i i would put on a bathing suit too girl i don't care stomach out all of the above but it just the way the essence of how they move is just a little different um but yeah i, I think that uh it, it don't really matter to me like i, I think that now i'm in the season of which i know who the fuck i am like i i i am gonna put that shit on when i have to i'm a, you know i i just i know and they come to me as well for like advice sometimes oh wow i should wear this oh wow what i should do with that like they always come to me about that stuff so that also makes me feel good as well that them knowing that oh girl i can come to her like even though i'm a bigger girl people might not think i'm a, you know as desirable as the people say um, but the girls not put their shit on, so they're gonna come to ask me, hey Bon, what what should I wear? Or Bon, what does this look like? You know, so I, I think that's how I navigate. I, I it's no not really a, a big um I don't feel like I feel different or anything other than the fact that I just know I'm big and they small as hell. And it's not even just fat, like I'm tall, like I'm tall as hell. Like when it comes to my friends, I be looking at them like, damn, bitch, y'all make me feel so tall. Like, how tall are you? I'm really not that tall. I'm only six foot. But it when wow. them, with them, being as though they're like five four and five seven, five eight, they make me feel so tall. And I'm yeah. like, okay, and I'm just a big girl. Oh, you didn't have to say five eight. <laughs> five eight ain't that. Sorry, short. Dad. you're you're a shorty girl too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm five, five five. You, yeah, you five. are you are vertically challenged. Yeah. Oh my god. It's a lot. You can't be this tall with all, you can't be this tall with all this ass. You know, I gotta stay close to the ground. I know a girl that'll give you run for your money. She tall Who? with ass. Who? I know a girl that's tall with we'll talk about that offline. Oh, can y'all <laughs> okay? We'll talk about it offline. 
what I, I do want to say no no um to the whole topic i agree with all of your your sentiments in that um i, I only propose that question because this would definitely be a part two season two so if you're listening and watching we are nowhere near done talking about being bigger dating and being in the community um and i asked that question because i've often had to reevaluate friendships not break them off but reevaluate what role do i play because you got to catch yourself people will call you and just for validation, hey, I want to run this by you. What you think about this? They never ask how you doing, what you got going on, nothing. You'll find yourself in situations where you're getting ready to go out and you have to constantly be the fashionista for everybody else and nobody's boosting you up. That's a problem. Or taking that's, why, that's why that's why I like to go out with these two girls on this camera, <laughs> you know, because these two girls, they go, we boost each other up like, oh, okay, you did that she one too. Real. And we have to check with each other a lot of times to make sure we don't look alike when we come out of the room, too. Um, but you often have to navigate that. You often have to navigate relationships because I've noticed in previous friendships, I'm listening to the small girls complain about the craziest things that not even a big deal. But when I start talking about it, the girls eat brunch and continue to talk. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't understand this. Or well, when you, you go out. Me? I rem- I will never forget. I was out with three of my friends. I'm y'all know I hang with older people, and they're and usually like I think it was Vaughn. Most of our friends are smaller people. I do have a lot of gay friends, so they were men. Um, and I'll never forget. And it happens often. This guy who was an ex of one of our friends, he hugged everybody in the line. There was like seven of us. He hugged everybody in the line. Those he didn't even know. I had met him a couple of times. Do you know he looked at me and shook my hand? And I said, the hell you shook my hand for? You hugged the rest of these girls. Oh, you know what I mean? I ain't want you to, you know, you ain't really my. T- I don't want you. Let me, let me say this loud and clear for the girls that are listening. We don't want you. You probably ain't even our type. You're dusty. Your hairline crooked. <laughs> we, you, you ain't even there. But no, I just say that because I know there are people that are watching and listening that look up to TikTok podcasts. And these are things they talk about being the bigger girl in the group, being the one that has to validate, being the one that has to give their experience and nobody listens, you know, not being able to talk to nobody because they want they don't want to be the ass of joke when they say they pay for drinks and pay for dinner or pay for a bill with a man that don't want them no more. Because smaller people, conventional gays, be there for y'all friends. Come on now, boost them up. I'm done. Let me get off my horse. I think our producer is ready for trivia. I know we're ready for trivia. I'm lit. These the problem is, Frank, they don't come prepared. See, I whatever I'm drinking, I make sure I have a canister full of it. And you just mm-hmm. see me refill. I've had about 40s. Period. They gotta step it up. But no, it's uh, trivia time. I have friend. to go to bed to wake up tomorrow. So I think okay. I was very I need to get back to my about, schedule. About my one cocktail. <laughs> Girl, July has been a month. A Come month, on. and then he's trying to end it with a bang, girl. I, I can't take it. That's all I, I, I need. Hercules, to Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Come on, Seven, hey, give man. us trivia time. Black reality yes. TV. Vaughn, so, um, this is trivia, Dave. Um, not Dave, Frank. We're gonna go, um, in order. So, to start off with T Nail, everybody gets a, one question a piece. Um, and it, in the sense that I don't know a question, I it will go next to you, and you can, you know, respond if you want. If you get it right, or it'll go to the next person, whatever that looks like. But um, everybody gets I mean, one if question. You don't know an answer. Yeah, if you don't know an answer. <laughs> but everybody gets one question uh, twice. So it's two rounds. Everybody gets two questions, basically. And then there's a tiebreaker at the end. If if there's a couple of us that have two points, got our points right, we'll have that tiebreaker at the end. Um, so yeah, take it away, um, Tevin. All right, I'll read it for you, TJ. In 2011, Nene Leakes starred on The Celebrity Apprentice. Name another black celebrity that joined her on the cast. This is so easy. Oh, it was the Jackson girl. What's her name? Latoya? Uh, uh-uh, get it right. Latoya What's her Jackson? name? Rebe. What's her name? What the people name? Are you saying Latoya Jackson? Is that what you're saying? Jackson. It was a Jackson sister. Nah, sis. You got to say the full name. Dionne Ward. Oh. I won't lose with that, bitch. Oh, you, oh, you didn't even list Dion Ward. You should have went with your and first she was line. definitely on there. Was she really? I yeah. don't remember her being on that season, remember, but remember Dion Ward and Nene got into it. She must she must have went home early. <laughs> what 
Y'all don't remember they got into it. They got into it because uh, no. right, we gotta move on. The next one. The, I can say this is a little hard. Who was the first Fine, black winner it. of America's Next Top Model? This um, is who is it on? Uh, it's on me. Oh. Um, I, I think uh, I'm just gonna go with Eva. I don't know. Oh, okay. Good, good. <laughs> I'm like I do not know. Because Danielle should have won that season. Danielle should have won. Pickford. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Eva Pickford. Okay. Eva Pickford. Ooh, mm. it's on you, Frank. Frank, it's on you, Frank. <laughs> what year did Kenya Moore win Miss v- USA, darling? Uh, was it 1996? I think it's 93. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I was like, I can't remember. It was 93 or 96. Mm-hmm. I won't even thought about it. I thought it was four, Frank. Candy Burst is credited as a writer on what 2017 Billboard number one single? Now I know she wrote no scrubs and no no no, but I don't know 2017. Hold on, hold on. I fly above all the haters. Oh, 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 oh. Um, don't be tardy for the party. Uh, that was the number one oh, single. Don't be tardy for I don't the know if that was the number one single. Oh, oh. Oh, I was about to say, man. I was about to say, girl. I'm gagged. Boo. I didn't know that. <laughs> I am gagged if that would have been right. Don't be tired for the party. You it's tried insane. it. Insane. Bill <laughs> plays the played the role of Regine, Regine Hunter on Living Single. How many seasons did this? Sh- mm. Kim, let me. I'm gonna go with remember, the lucky we got guess. people that listen. I'm I'm Kim gonna say Bill eight. The role. I'm gonna say six. It's a little short. Five. It was short. Yeah, it was short lived. Maybe they did, but you know they used to have a lot of they used to have a lot of episodes. But it was short. The, they the did. Season, it was the only season was like twenty five episodes. Very long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Long Look at Frank. Time. She took them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next. Shout out that Tiffany Parlor had several spinoffs after leaving Flavor of Love. Name yeah. two. Mm. Um. Yeah, but you did me dirty. Ooh. I can't even think. Love. Uh, I love New York. Uh huh. Um, one and two. It's like no, <laughs> girl, work. No, the other her. one was wasn't she on the one with Monique Charm School? Was she on that one too? Or that was. Are you talking about like her specific her. for her? What do you do every day? Girl, what you and, do? Oh, breakfast with answer. Tiffany. Breakfast with Tiffany. Breakfast with Tiffany, or something like that, right? I think that answer the question. Oh, I was I was gonna say New York Hollywood. goes to work. Um, oh, word. that was really good. Okay, okay. I remember Hollywood. But she do got a. It was a show, Breakfast with Tiffany, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really enjoyed it too. Kevin, but I'm gonna let you have that one. Is it me? Which American Frank, Idol yeah, alum? Yeah, Frank, uh-huh. Which American Idol alum Jennifer Hudson became an EGOT in 2022? What category did she win an Oscar? A Best Supporting Actress. Stunning. Ooh. You good because I didn't know that. It was for Dream Girls. It was for Dream, Dream Girls. Who don't know that? But I'll never forget. Yes. Angela White, aka Black China's first reality TV appearance was on which TV show? Ooh, was it Keeping Up with the Kardashians? They let her over there. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold it was on. before that. I can't think it though. Um that. was it Love and Hip Hop? That's the only thing I could think of. Oh, it was. Ah! Oh, oh. right. They did let her over there. Wow, that was her first appearance. Oh, no, what you call it? That was what. How baby daddy is Rob? How baby daddy is Rob? That was her dating Rob was her first time on a reality TV show. I don't believe that. How do do we know know her? She was a stripper, right? They're keeping up with the Kardashians. Been around for a long time now. She had her own show, though. Back. Did she not have her own show? No, she that was on. Oh, okay. She came on as a friend first. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that makes yeah. sense. I was gonna say because the as the raw part. I was gonna say the raw part was way later. She had been on a couple Hit shows. Support by who won? Let us know. Um, I'm, I'm um, gonna promise to Frank. Mm, I only got one right. I was off on the Miss We got a bonus. We got our producer has a bonus question. This is okay. Let me see if I'm gonna win this one. Who we go to? Anybody on, on Lil Kim's 2006 reality show Countdown and Lockdown? How many days did the show document before she went to the prison? I'm gonna say 90. I'm gonna say 50. 105. Or like 46. It's something like that. 30. Let's see who's closest. 
This is intense. Yeah. Wait, yeah. 14 is crazy. Whoa. <laughs> Frank got it. Frank got it. I told Frank you Frank won. I, 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 I was thinking about like production wise, they ain't documenting, they ain't paying for that shit, not back mm-hmm. in the day. So I was like, it can't be no more than 30. 14 days. I forgot she had that show. Uh-huh. Me too. Well, Shut boys, it's been an hour. It's been an hour and a half. We have spent together tonight on episode this six of Thick Talk Podcast. Frank, you have been a breath of fresh air, darling. Mm-hmm. I am very upset with you, though. Because I don't have a martini glass? No, because why are you not coming to New Orleans for Red Dress Wine? Girl, she's booked. She's when busy. is that? New Orleans. In two weeks. Well, What's the we day? I've never seen you at a Red Dress Wine. I'm What's, I was supposed to go last year, but my damn uh, fast-ass friend got pregnant and decided to have a baby child the same time as the Red Dress Wine, because I already had my gown and all. We will be leaving on next Thursday to Monday. It's the 8th through the 12th. We'll be there. If you're not doing anything, I challenge you to take that flight. And, baby, I will find you some accommodations for you to get. Mm, don't tell me that. It. Don't tell uh, me that. I will. Mm. Bitch, if you want to come, we will make it happen. Next okay. weekend, Red Dress Run in New Orleans. And those of you who are listening and watching episode six of Thick Talk Podcast, this is our last episode virtual for season one, I want to just applaud all of you gentlemen for a great episode tonight and applaud my coach for a great season one. I will see you two in New Orleans in two weeks for our live taping of our season finale of season one. Seven episodes of Thick Talk Podcast. What better way to complete than the number of completion itself? Um, Frank in the City, well known to many. I'm excited to put this out. Um, and to also, also to those who are watching, you know, I was going to say, get registered, do your research. It is voting season. It is time to buckle down and get serious. It is not a joke when I say your rights are in jeopardy. Women's rights are in jeopardy. Queer rights are in jeopardy. Black rights. The other party, the Republican Party are talking about bringing back stop and frisk. Giving police officers immunity in the time of right now where we have um, Miss Miss Sonia Massey's case at, at stake. And we just saw a product come out today from Neighborhood Talk of a young man being punched in the face while handcuffed calmly. He was punched by a police officer. So there is a constant reason for you to do your research and vote. Um, but I'll turn it over to my co-host and Frank. Any last words for people that are watching or listening? Um, well, congratulations on a successful season one. Cheers to you all for, you know, taking the charge and building a safe space for people like me to come and other people to come and share our stories of being thick. I really appreciate it as a creator, as someone that built their business on their back from day one. I know how much it takes to start anything, how much it takes to put your time and effort into anything, even before you probably, you know, getting checks or anything, putting vision and purpose behind your dreams is not easy. So I would like to say congratulations to everybody that is involved in this. This is fun. I would love to come back for season two uh, and seasons after that, because we're going we're gonna to say and speak many, many seasons of uh, beautiful blessings. We're going to have to take we're going to have to take this to the stage. OK, we receive um, it. OK, and you're going to be a friend of the show. OK, yes, okay. <laughs> we love that. I just want to say thank you, guys. Um, it's always a pleasure doing this. Life is life in right now. We are busy, okay, people? But I'm not saying it in a way where I'm like, yeah, then why you want us to listen? But I'm saying it in a way to say that we show up because we really do enjoy what we do. So I just definitely want to say to my co-hosts, T-Nail and I am Von J, I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. Shout out to y'all. Thank y'all so much for holding me down. Thank y'all for putting up with the dog's lateness. But, you know, this takes time. And more importantly, I want to thank you, Frank, for coming on the show and being uh just saying yes honey you said yes with the quickness it, it wasn't no thought behind it it wasn't no oh, i gotta think about it you said yes let me know no today more. and i'll be there so i appreciate you for just saying yes of yes, course we do. when we was thinking about who this who to have this week i was like i think freaking city <laughs> i said no. dave y'all got that connection already y'all need to go ahead and get that get that pop <laughs> yeah i was excited to do it it was i, yes. I was really excited and yes. i was I will always say yes. Uh-oh. 
Not somebody calling me at the end of the podcast. <laughs> Did that cut me off? No, no, no. no you here. here, but it's 10 55. Who calling you this time of night, boo? Oh, my friend. <laughs> what? Listen, I don't, I'm telling you, I have suitors. So I'm okay. not necessarily dating anyone, but in my head right now, I'm on an episode of The Bachelorette, and okay. I have I have many I have many contestants. Okay, mm -hmm. but who will get the final roles? We may never know. We may never okay. know. <laughs> I love that fantasy. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. here we are at the end of episode six. Here we are at the end of our virtual season of season one. Um, I will never let an episode go by without thanking. Tevin, our producer, I had the pleasure, <laughs> all, of us, all of us had the pleasure of um, watching episode one and watching it now. And Tevin, without you, we don't know where we'll be, darling. I probably would have gave up on this because it was a lot. So thank you for that. I'm excited to see you in New Orleans, all of us to be together, including our producer. So Frank, you have to get to New Orleans next weekend. But, Girl, the pressure. Um, and shout out to our support team. Um, she know who she is, keeps us in check. So I want to thank you for always being here during season one. I um, mean, to all of you that are watching and listening, y'all, it only takes two seconds. Share this with five people. Get them to listen to any of our episodes. We have anything from Cowboy Carter episode to this episode to talk about spring flings to episodes about Father's Day and Mother's Day. We have so much content that we're willing to share. Single and dating with Lamont, the gay dating coach of Atlanta. I mean, a lot of content. Share it. Love it. Subscribe. We are excited to be completed season one. We'll be taking a hiatus for a couple of months until season two. Um, but trust me, we'll still be getting out content. So make sure you follow. If you're going to be in New Orleans for the Red Dress Run next weekend, hit us up on the Thick Talk Podcast, Thick Talk Podcast Instagram or YouTube so we can link up. We can do brunch, dinner, anything like that. So we want to see you. Um, but as always, keep it thick. Keep it cute. And to the man that I kissed randomly last night, what a great time, darling. And Is he a listener? It's a Officially Leo season, huh? Is he a listener? We hope so. I have no idea. We don't even know his name. My God, today. And we talked to this man for like an hour. <laughs> At wow. least 30 minutes. I love and it. did was not it, get a name. Was the kiss good? I don't remember anything from last night. It's they seemed season. like it was a great kiss. Mm. That's what they, they, they made it seem I'm going to send you was. the video so you can tell me if you know him, Frank. No, what you I know mean. I will send it right on over. <laughs> I'll send me that big girl that sent all that money. Y'all keep it thick. Y'all follow Frank in the city. Support him. Follow Big Waves on Swim. I am Von J. And don't forget to follow the best of the best Thick Talk podcast on YouTube, Instagram, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. Until next time, we'll see you in New Orleans, darling. Thank you for virtual season one. Keep it thick and keep it cute.